Hey guys, what's up? It's Endar. Today I'm continuing the series I started two weeks ago about starting off with a pod. This is very useful for survival servers where it's basically a race against time to be the first one with a safe zone base. If that's what you want to do, of course. So I'm going to assume you've seen the last video. If you haven't, check it out. It's on my channel. I'll probably be putting a link to it up on the screen now. So you know from the last video that we started off by making this basic refinery and basic assembler and then going on to make a small cargo container by mining the cobalt. But now you may have noticed that in the last video I mapped out quite a few asteroids and I've continued to do that but now we have a lot of other elements such as silver, uranium and platinum that we can't actually refine using the basic refinery. And for that we need a large refinery. So with the same technique I used in the last video, go into the G menu or the toolbar config, or whatever you call it, and then middle mouse button, click the refinery to add it to the build planner over here. You might want to do the same as well with the assembler, but for this you'll need to click on the survival kit, go up here, click assembler, then middle mouse, click that. And now we have both the refinery and assembler in the build planner. Now since in reality, compared to the big refinery, the basic refinery is absolute rubbish. So we're actually going to replace the basic refinery with a bigger refinery, but not right now because we actually need the basic refinery to refine stuff to make the big refinery, if you get what I mean. The same goes with the basic assembler. Thankfully we have all these cargo containers that we can use to store the materials we need to make the production modules. So let's get started and put all the components we need into production. So if you point our crosshair at any inventory terminal that should be around yellow on the outsides, and then shift middle mouse button it will set it all to production. And that's a lot of steel plates, and we're not going to have enough iron ingots to make them all. As you can see, we've only got around 1,000 iron ingots so far, so we're going to need to go and mine some more iron. Now luckily there's a 9 asteroid right in front of us. There's also one over there that's a bit closer, but let's go to the closer one. I remember the last video how I marked out all these asteroids by flying around in the suit and holding my hand drill. Now depending on how many ores you managed to map out last time, you might need to find some more of the rarer ones such as platinum and uranium. Because you're going to need them later, but you don't need them right now because you can't actually do anything with them without a large refinery. So as we arrive at the iron asteroid, make sure not to crash into the asteroid. Otherwise, that wouldn't be very good for your ship. Now if you're struggling to find the iron, it should appear as a red blob on the surface of the asteroid. Here's one right here that we just marked out a while back on the last video. And then if we have this drill selectors, we can go into any view really. If you want to have a good look at what you're mining, press Alt and then use the mouse to scroll around. It changes your view around the ship. I then activate the drill, and then gobble up some of the iron. Now just like the stone or the cobalt, you're not going to need a large amount of iron, because by that small amount we've got like 20, 40, 50,000 iron ore. So to get this to actually refine quicker, you might want to put it in front of the cobalt in the basic refinery. Now iron processes in the refinery a lot faster than cobalt, so you're going to get quite a lot of it quite quickly. As you can see, it's all going into the basic assembler to produce our steel plates. Now remember, once there's nothing left in this production tab, then you're going to have everything you need for the refinery and assembler, and then you can get down to grinding down the existing basic refinery and basic assembler and then build the actual refinery and big assembler. Now you may find that the components stop producing after a while. This might just be because you've run out of iron going into the basic refinery. A good way to stop this is to take the cobalt ore out altogether and then shoveling in some iron ore and then take the cobalt out again if it gets automatically taken in by the refinery and then shove some more iron ore in there. And now I've got a lot of iron ore that's going to be being processed over the next few minutes. So I'd say just wait for this to produce. If you want, just go and have a fly around and see if you can find any more asteroids. This is a good time to map out some of the rarer ores, if you haven't already. So once all your components are completed, you can now start upgrading the ship with a large refinery. Right, so first you might see that this is currently producing some cobalt because it loves cobalt. So we go into the control panel, turn it off. Now if you turn it off, it'll stop producing anything, but then it also won't pull ore from cargo. 
so you can safely put the cobalt back into cargo and absolutely nothing will happen. And do the same with the assembler. As long as the assembler is not producing anything, you don't have to turn that off. Just take all the components out of it and put it all in the cargo container. And now we can start grinding. At first I'm gonna get rid of the assembler. And then I'm gonna go into the toolbar menu and drag down the survival kit and then scroll to get the assembler and then place that down and I'll start welding up with what I have in my inventory and then make sure to get rid of the refinery out of the build planner temporarily just so you don't withdraw all the thousands of steel plates for the refinery and you get your inventory full up also remove the assembler from the build planner because it's already got some components on it so now do right click add it to the build planner middle mouse button withdraw from the nearest cargo container and now we can weld it up completely. And my oxygen's running low, I'm just going to refill that from the survival kit. There we are, we have a full tank of oxygen in our suit. And we'll do the same to the basic refinery. Bye bye basic refinery. You served us well. Now as you can see the large refinery is considerably bigger than the basic refinery so we're going to have to make a little bit of room for it. We'll first get rid of these blocks here. Now don't worry, it won't cause the ship to fall apart. And also this block here, this block here maybe, and these ones here. And now we can place the large refinery. And make sure to do it in a way that the conveyor port is facing the other conveyor port so it withdraws stuff. And then we weld what we can onto this, right click it, turn it to the build planner, and then withdraw everything you can from the nearest conveyor port. Now this is going to take several withdrawals to actually get all the resources we need for it put on the refinery itself. I want everything you got eyes on it, and good luck welding this, it will take forever. Although actually one way to speed it up is by making a more advanced welder. You can make an enhanced welder, which you should have resources for. Any more advanced welders like this proficient welder you need silver for, and we don't have any silver. But I'll take this advanced welder, then go into character tools in this menu, drag the enhanced welder down, replace it with the current welder you've got, and then you can weld this up a lot faster. And there we have it, we've replaced the basic refinery and assembler with the large refinery and assembler. So now we've got all this advanced production capability, our next priority is to upgrade the ship's power supply. Because this solar panel and those two batteries aren't going to be enough to power a large ship which eventually will have a jump drive. So for that we need a reactor that powers by uranium. So if we go into the new assembler's production tab, you'll see there's a lot more different components we can produce. But for this we'll need reactor components which need silver. So assuming you've got everything marked out already, go to the nearest silver asteroid and mine it. So here we are, approaching the silver asteroid. Now you'll see the silver looks kinda like stone, except more silvery and shiny, and has some very funky looking veins flowing through it, so once you find the silver, you'll know it's silver. I mean, it can be easily confused with platinum, but You'll know it if you have an ore detector. So here again we mine the silver with the drill. Now unlike the iron, you're going to need to get a lot more ore with the silver to get the desired amount for a reactor. So mine a little bit more than you'd mine with any other ore, like iron, and then go into the inventory of your ship and then have a look of how much you've got. We managed to get about 13,000 silver ore, which we're then just going to dump in the refinery and this should start producing at the moment we put it in. Might want to take this stuff out as well just so we have more room for more silver. Why does copper always get in here first? And actually might be a good idea to mine a bit more silver as well. There we are. So if we just back up from the asteroid a bit. And now we should be ready to start building the reactor. So if you go into the G menu, you'll find small reactor, and you'll see that it's got a lot of common components, steel plates, computers, motors, but then there's 100 reactor components, as I mentioned earlier. We'll need to go into production, and for this we can just put this straight to production. 
since it's quite a critical component. Just want to make sure you've got all the reactor components done first. You can use the build planner thing with this, just I prefer just to make sure I've got all the reactor components done first. And this will take a little while to produce, so sit tight. So, and now that all the reactor components we need are complete, we can start assembling the reactor. So I like to put my reactor up here, replacing this curved conveyor tube right here. So, we get the reactor, we need steel plates for it, so first of all we'll middle mouse button to put the small reactor in the build planner, withdraw everything we can, then we can place it and start welding it up. And then we keep getting all this stuff from the cargo container with the middle mouse button. And it says we need four metal grids, shift middle mouse button, put it to production. And with the new assembler this should not take long at all. Assuming we have nickel of course. Yes, we do have nickel. Yeah, we need to get the nickel out of the survival kit, because this has broken the conveyor system. Like, it's a nice place to put it here, but it does get... It does mean you have to build the thing before you can have proper conveyor access to the drill. So anyway, um, nickel. Let's get all the nickel we need, plop it in this cargo container right here. And now we should have... Yep, there we are. Four metal grids, and we can start building it up. And now we have the reactor. However, if you go into the terminal and go into the reactor, you'll see it's not actually producing any power. And that's because we need uranium. And so time to go to another asteroid, wherever the nearest uranium asteroid you found is. The one I found is 46 kilometers away, so this is going to take a little while. And here we are, arriving at the uranium asteroid. Oh great, we're going to overshoot. So here we have arrived at the Uranium Asteroid. Now we'll approach it slowly, as to not crash. Then switch to first person view, get the drill ready. You don't actually need to switch to first person view for this, but I find it a lot easier. And then we start mining. Now you can tell Uranium is Uranium, because it's very dark. Much darker than the rock on the asteroid, and does not really look like any of the other ores, so it's quite easy to find. That is, if you can find it at first, because it is very rare. And also with uranium, you'll have to mine a lot of it to get even a little bit of uranium. So good luck! It's especially hard to get a lot of it if you've only got one drill, so we might end up adding more drills in the future, just so we can get resources a bit faster, but we'll need more cargo space and all that for it actually to be efficient. So here we've got about um, 8,000 uranium ore, which isn't a lot at all. So we'll just keep mining this until we've got maybe about 20,000. So here we have 20k uranium ore. So to actually get this to start refining, we're going to have to drag it into the refinery. And now this will take quite a while to actually produce a lot of uranium. But we've now got uranium in the small reactor, which is going to be a lot more powerful than just having a solar panel and two batteries. So providing we have a steady supply of uranium, we're going to be able to power a lot more. And that'll be including a jump drive. However, because of all the stuff you need for the jump drive, it's probably going to need its own video. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. We've managed to upgrade the pod with a refinery and large assembler, and also a small reactor. So we have much more power capabilities. So I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the part 2 in which we build the jump drive, which will allow us to travel through space, get to asteroids a lot quicker to mine resources, and also manage to get us to the moon over there where we can start doing some trading, and eventually get some zone chips. And then we will be able to start building our base. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya!